I want to darken that area back here up a little bit more because it's not quite, it's getting a little bit too light. Uh, I'll come back in. This is dry and put some shadow under there and make that, that all work a little bit. And I'm going to enhance those, all of the stuff back here will get enhanced in this next, next go round. So I just need to make sure that I keep, I don't want to keep the white of the paper. I mean, snow has got color to it. You know, I mean, you know, you take a look at it and snow, it's really not white. It's got all kinds of just colors in it, depending on the sun and what's reflecting around it and everything else. So that's one of the reasons why you see me do stuff like this, because I get cool, you get this cool blue into the warm areas down here, a little bit of yellow, and it picks it up and sort of gives it a nice transition, um, nice general overall feel. But again, half the battle, what I'm painting, is how much I want to put in there, how much should I leave out. Um, I suppose we all go through that, you know, I just, uh, I don't know, I just, that's why working from a value study, which I'm not doing right now, by the way, but working from a value study helps because you've got that value study in front of you and you can see those big dark shapes and work, work them out. And usually if I do value studies, I do them in three, you know, I'll, I'll do a light, a medium value, and a dark value. That way it gives me, it gives me the, the, the premise that I, I want. Actually, you know what? I may, this by way, is, this is by way a, just a pause. Um, but, but I do have a, I do have a, a drawing here that I did and sure, I can't find it. That makes sense. Oh, here. All right. So this will give you an idea. See this piece that here that's here? This is what it started with. You can actually pass this around because there's just there's copies of it. But that's that's generally how I'll start. I'll do I'll do a uh, a sketch for us. Actually, here's another one. You can start from there. You can start from here. Just to give you an idea as to how. When I, I, cause I do a lot of drawing and I would, I love drawing in black and white, you know, sketching is a, is a, is basically the major part of painting. From, from my perspective, if you can't draw, you'll never be able to paint. Because if you don't understand perspective, if you don't understand what a rock looks like, if you don't understand what a tree looks like or a building looks like, or a horse looks like, and, and again, I can't put a horse down there unless I really understand what the, horse, how, what the horse looks like. So for me to try to do it out of my head is absolutely crazy. I would have to draw, do it a number of times in order for me to get comfortable with it. So um, I drawing, again, is, is an extremely important part of painting and really understanding perspective um, is so, so important. <coughs> so now if I'm just, if I don't talk and I just paint, what's got that going to do to the lady that's filming this? Yeah. You can see what you're doing, right? No, no. I don't know. I'm just putting in, sh what I'm basically doing is just putting in shadows, a little bit of shadow under the eaves of the house, just to give you a little bit of. Okay, so I'm going to leave the roof of the house white for now. Uh, not that there's a lot of snow on it. I don't want to go there necessarily, but we'll leave it white for now uh, so I can see that. All right, so I've got some things that are happening over here, um, and we're going to do them all in middle, middle value. I've got a few rocks that are down here, um, so we'll make, some, we'll make some marks there. Hopefully, we'll be indicative of rocks, one there, something that's here. And they're shapes. All I'm doing is just basically shapes to help this along. I've got a nice rock over here. And I don't mean to jump around so much because that's not a good thing to do. OK, 
Okay, but they're just basically we're just putting in general shapes. And what I'm looking to try to do is to give you a path, you know, coming down here. I've got a tree that's going across here too, but we'll just start to bring this down a little bit. So we'll put a little bit more, a little bit more water in here. I'm going to start to do my trees in a second. And uh, I guess because the uh, because we're working with an unclean palette. we are going to get what we get. Now yeah, we'll get some nice tone. We'll, we'll, we'll work out all right. OK, so we got something going on over there. Let's get that a little bit bluer up and hit in this area here, a little bit more violet-y, I guess. Okay, so I've got this creek. In the center of this, and we got a little roadway. Um, we got some edges that we have to deal with, even though we got. Sh uh, let's see. Can you see that coming over here? If you guys got any questions? Well, I'm painting. Ask. I can do that. I can talk. Don't tell my. You don't. That's between us, though, because when my wife asks me questions when I'm painting, I say, "Go away. I'm painting. I can't talk." <laughs> so, but now it's. Um, it brings that concentration. Yeah, it does. Um, but you know, I found that you know, working with demos like this, people want to know things. So I, you know, you just have to learn to do it. You know, just uh, accept it's part of the process. Um, so let's come down here and get this a little bit cooler, as this makes this turn. We're going to come down here, and make this, put this in a little bit more shadow over here. Oops. Sorry. Oh, you can't do that. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, sorry. Yeah. That's why I'm, I have a studio. And I have a studio in my home, and I have a studio in my, oh, where I have my other, where I paint my oils and stuff. And it's sad, because I, I will do that, and I will do this. And the walls are just absolutely oh, just, no. oh, just the walls, the floor. And I, you know, my wife walks down and she goes, <laughs> and walks away. Just shut, just shut the door, yeah. Just leave. I can't deal with it. But unfortunately, I'm so used to picking up paint and, and flicking. flicking it. And that's not a good thing to do. I'm sorry. I apologize for the, I apologize to the Braintree Library. Okay, so let's do, um, let's get a little bit darker in here because I want to create a creek with water. I'm going to make some hard edges. Uh, there and maybe, maybe here. So we got sort of ice around it, or we'll do something with that. I'm not sure exactly what. Change. And um, that's good. I got tissue. I can work. I don't know. Take the water out of the brush with the tissue. OK, so I've got this sort of path coming down here. Uh, I'm going to start to put in a tr let me get also, I want to get some of the stuff over here done too. So this is all snow, right? This is going to be interesting. Hello. 
Come on down. Because you can allow, I mean, it's just, it just working vertically offers you a lot of things that, that you won't get if you were working a little bit more, more flatter. Uh, and, and let me tell you, I've done stuff where it's just nothing but just drips coming all the way down. Just put it in there and let it go. And, and you don't worry about what happens, you know, just, just because you're concentrating in the air. You're doing it more like that piece over there where you're not worried about what happens at the ends and so forth. So it's more of a vignette. But yeah, absolutely. You, you, go, you know, it, it, I've learned as much as I've got to say this. I've, I've basically learned to allow it to tell me what to do, uh, and and that's. I think I just go with the flow. If, if this says, if this says do something, then I will say, well, you know what? It it knows more than I do. I it, it knows where it wants to go, and I'll just follow the I'll follow the lead. See, and then we'll, we can come back. We can always come back, like I said, and put put a little bit more dark in there, a little bit more shadow in there. This, when it dries, will create, a, it's going to create a nice little rivulet in here, which will give us some, you know, just some overall feel. So, yeah, you got to sort of let it happen. The hardest part for, you know, you know what the hardest part is for this is learning to let go, learning not to paint, learning to let it go and, and, and get away from it. Don't try to control it. Because it, it, once we start to do that, we, we're treating it more like oil or we're treating it more like gouache or acrylics. We're, we're going in there and we're just hammering away at the stuff. And that's, I found, when it get, starts to get really muddy and it starts to get overworked. You know, you get over-disciplined uh, and it loses its freshness. So I, I, I sort of feel as though, and for most cases, it's sort of better when you're doing this kind of stuff to allow it to to go now, I'm a little bit on the light side, quite frankly, over here. There's a, there's. I'm going to darken some of the stuff up. I'm probably going to richen and darken a lot of this stuff back here because I want, I want the darkest dark against the lightest light. But right now, I'm just sort of feeling my way through in my base piece, and and normally, I'd be going a lot faster if I were doing this in the studio, obviously. But, but. Um, yeah. Well, also talking about it and. You know, I've, I've got, <coughs> um, when I'm teaching, I, I go through the same process and I'll walk away from it. And I don't want, you know, you talk and you're helping people and so forth. Actually, she knows because she's a student of mine. And I'm over there helping. I'm over here so I go back and it's dry. Now I, I got a problem, right? <laughs> now I got all of this. Now what am I going to do now? So you have to go back and re-wet everything. And So the sun's coming again down here, so this is all going to be in shadow. So we're going to do this in sort of interesting. S using a lot of cerulean blue on this, I'll, I'll get in here and use some cobalt blue. Blue's a, a, this shadow stuff is kind of cool. It just works out real good. And then uh, coming across, um, Let's see, what do I have? <sighs> We're going to put a shadow back in here somewhere. Maybe I'm going to make this whole thing shadow. Um, and that's going to come down. And this is in shadow over here. I got. So we'll just lose a lot of this stuff in shadow. Whoops little bit too much. All right, so we'll we'll arch that, make that nice and soft. Now bring bring all this water in here. Again, snow. It's got some it's got it's got some color to it, not always white. Um, and then come across and this whole thing is this whole thing is going to be what pond like so I guess what I'm going to do let's say it's a frozen pond I've got let me put this tree in over here well let me start to do this let me get the trees going uh, this is going to be white here um, so we're going to end up with a shadow under here 
in probably a shadow over here as we come across. I'll just put this, we'll pretend that there's something over here outside the frame of the painting. going to strengthen that up a bit. <coughs> you see that all right? You guys can see this? Let me get back here so I can see what I'm doing. All right, cool. So we can walk in. So if I make this dark enough, I'll be able to step into this painting. So it'll get darker. I'm not, it's not quite where I want it to go yet, but, I, but it gives me, gives me an area so that I know roughly where I want to go. All right, and I'm going to make this. Let's get some blue and I'll mix. What I'm doing right now is just mixing some ultramarine blue. Sorry. No, go ahead. Yeah, no, absolutely. Well, I don't know if you want to take a picture right now, but it was progress. ah, progress painting, right? <laughs> I get it. Well, I suppose it's better to paint now in case it doesn't work out, right? Yes. All right, so edge down, down over here. So let's get the rock done and get the trees done. So the trees right here, that's, I'm going to let that dry a bit. I want to get some of these trees done. So what I'm going to do with the trees is I'm going to change up. I'm going to go to a little smaller, let me go to a little smaller brush here. Um, No. No, I'm just. Are they worrying you? <laughs> really? They are. No kidding. I, are they worrying you? I'm gonna let them go then. This, we just. Well, we'll work. Is, is you worried about it? Oh, I don't want to check that. There you go. You want? How do you not worry about it? <laughs> Right. Well, I'm going to go up. Uh, the reason I'm not worried about it is I'll drip it. I'm going to go up. Oh, that's going to get hugely dark over. I'm going to, that shadow is going to be like that shadow that's over there. I'm going to put a real strong shadow. So I'm not, I don't c concern myself with that. And I know it's, you know, it's frightening. Yeah. <laughs> it's frightening it, it, sometimes. It's actually frightening sometimes because I've accidentally taken my brush and splattered this thing with crap. And, you know, you, you, you do that, what ends up happening is you've got to work it into the painting. You know, you just have to say, okay. You know how a lot of that stuff becomes birds in the sky? You know, like those <laughs> little splats of here and there. Well, let's little bird here, bird here. Oh, we got another bird over here. And pretty soon you got thousands of birds. Now you got to give it something to feed on. You got all these birds, so you got to put a dead animal down. Oh, no, 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 I didn't say that. <laughs> you know. um, okay, so, so here's what I'm doing. I'm going to come back to all of this. But um, what I want to do is I want to put in... This, this is my first tree. And the way I handle this is this is, it's a little bit of, it's, it's toned, as you can see, because the water is toned. I don't have a choice. Normally, I just, I'd be putting this in with clear water. And um, it's going to have some rooting, obviously, into the ground or into the snow area back down here, right? So I'm going to end up doing something like this. Put these real now. Here's a drip that you're gonna worry about, so I don't <laughs> just don't want to do that. Yeah, you can. That's okay. I don't mind. All right. So we got we got the trunk of the tree coming up, and the way uh, usually what happens is that when I put this stuff in, if this is wet, the paint. If you put enough pigment in there, the paint is gonna wick up, right? So it'll soften as it comes up. 
So I usually do this. I usually come in here and I'll do this kind of stuff here where I'll put a lot of paint down here and allow it to wick up. Now I'm getting a fatter. This is get, we got to, we got to, right? So we got to, we're going to come up from the bottom that way. And I'm going to come down from the top. And I'm going to come down from the top and it's going to get, when I, when I come down from the top, I want, I want the top to be darker. And then hopefully these two are going to get married together and live happily ever after with a little bit of help. Right, and then we'll, we'll, we'll worry about, so, so, I'm, so I've got some transition going on here. And one of the nice things about this, if I get a clean piece of tissue, and one of the ways to handle this is that you can go back and put, put all of that light, you know, because no trees, all the barks have, the bark has sort of, you know, it got, in, exactly. So what happens is that if, if you do something like this, you can create some ambiance that um, you can use to your advantage. Now, the, dark, the reason why, the reason why I usually come down, uh, not all the time, but usually I come down with the dark from the, from the top, is not because I want your eye to go off the page. Hopefully that's not going to happen because I'm going to make enough over here. But generally under the canopy of the tree, it's darkest because the sun can't get there. You've got all of this, all of this foliage that's going on. If you're dealing with a deciduous tree, dis you know, a, a broadleaf tree, you've got heavy canopy. If you're dealing with pine, the same thing's going to happen. You've got all this heavy needled stuff, like conifer trees are going to have all different kinds of needle, whether they're spruce or whatever. So usually it's darker up here and lighter at the bottom and warmer at the bottom, generally speaking, because you've got a lot of refracted light that's happening. So, uh, you know, I, it's not cast in stone, guys, but you've got to make this stuff look like it's, it, it's buried in the, in the ground. Uh, it has to be anchored in the ground. So uh, that's my base for that tree, and we'll just put a couple of others in here. Uh, I got a tree that's over here that we want to put in. But in this one here, I'm going to make this lighter. All right, I'm going to leave that light because I want, uh, that's going to be against the dark area. So what I want to do is come in here and just, I just want to leave... I want to leave it as light as possible by mixing a lot of water with a very little pigment. So it, ha it can stand out against it. Right? And then down here, against the snow, we're going to just go the opposite way. All right, so so we'll get, we hopefully what we'll do is we'll get this to stand out a little bit there and there so it looks like something. And I'll go back and put the texture in uh, on that when I use when I do my real darks. So going back to this, it's a little bit too wet still, but we're going to just do a little bit of sort of something that makes it look like. Yep. Like the one you passed around, is that what you actually paint over? Or no, no, no. Those are, that just gives me <coughs> that just gives me what I want to do. I, I that gets that's my reference material. Usually, I work from a black and white reference material because I don't. One of the problems that I run into, and other people will run into as well, is is that um, photographs, by 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 virtue of their nature, are not true. They are false. They give you a false sense of color, a false sense of what you want to paint. And usually what will end up happening is you'll go to that photograph and you'll say, hey, that color is not the color. I want to paint that color. So you get trapped. You get, ra you get wrapped up into painting the uh, sepia uh, uh, because it's a dark brown. And, not, and, and, it's, and it's, you're, getting, you're getting away from being creative. You're following, you're into a trap where you're copying something. So generally, if you paint from a black and a white photograph or you do something like that, it's, or, or you can do your own sketches before you do that, then what ends up happening is, is that you're, you're becoming more creative, I guess, more of an artist. You're, you're becoming more true to what you want to paint as opposed to what's 
what's on the canvas, I mean, what's on the uh, photograph. So, you know, it's that kind of stuff that, that I try to stay away from. 